Well, hello, everybody. Thanks for being here for another one of my, one, these are actually some of my most favorite videos. I love talking about different topics and things in the planner community. So today I'm going to chit chat with you a little bit about planner funks and planner ruts and all of those good things. Well, not so good things in our planning lives. So let me know before we start, if you have ever experienced a planner funk or a planner rut and kind of what those things mean to you. Are they different? Are they the same? And like, how do you move out of that? And like, how do you do that? So I guess for me, a planner funk is, it seems larger than just the planner rut. When I'm in a full scale planner funk, I kind of stop doing everything altogether. I don't really feel inspired or creative in my planner. Uh, it's either something to do with like colorful versus neutral or the stickers that I'm using or that I don't have enough of something functional in my planner to get me going and I'm focusing more on the decorative or I don't have enough decorative to keep me inspired. That's what a full scale planner funk feels like. Like a planner rut feels like maybe I've tried the wrong layout. Maybe I am trying a planner and it's not working, or maybe I've been in a layout for too long and that is not working also because that has happened to me before as well. Thinking back, my most recent planner funk happened during a huge like life disaster. And I feel like a lot of the times when I'm in a planner funk, I'm having like a full scale life meltdown disaster or something big is happening in my life and I'm having to take all of my energy and put it into those things and essentially stop using my planner, which I'll show you kind of visually what that looked like in this planner. This was the planner that I was using that I wanted to hold on to so badly, but it just didn't work. And then talk about like, how I'm feeling now in my planning system and that kind of thing. And then I also have five tips or five things that I think helped me to either get out of my planner rut or have helped me in the past. So let's first, let's just dive in and take a look at my major full scale planner funk. So this is me showing you my vulnerable side here. So this is my old planner and this was the, and I'm sure some of you have this one, but this is like a vertical, but the inside is colorful. So the dividers are color colorful, which is great, but the layouts are also colorful. They've got stuff on the page up here. And what I have noticed for myself is that cannot be a thing. I'm sure if you have been a follower of mine for a while, you have heard me say things when I really like a planner, like this will be fine, or I'll try this and I'll make it work in this way. I think that is like a dead giveaway that a planner layout is not going to work for you. That's not to say like, don't try things and, and don't be creative. That is not at all what I'm saying. Like give, give things a try, experiment, but know going into it that that's an experiment. Don't try to fit your planning style into whatever mold you think you need to fit it into and make sure that you're being true to you. Okay, so this planner started in July, 2021. I started off super strong, right? <laughs> Here we are, super strong, full layout, fully written in all the pen, all the things. Weekly layout, looking good, fully done, all the pen, all the things, okay? still going strong. Okay. Then here, this is what I would call like a little bit of a planner rut. So this is like a normal to-do list, but like leaving a blank box here. And then Wednesday had nothing here. And then I just didn't write on Sunday. Like this is like the beginning of like, oh, I don't know if this is working for me. So there is that and all of that. Okay. And then this this is kind of a disaster. Oh, I think actually I know what happened here. So that layout I chose not to use. So this was actually my layout for that week. This is not bad. So we picked up momentum again. So you can kind of visually see that in that other spread, I lost a little bit of momentum and then I picked it up again because I got energized and rejuvenated for Christmas in July, which is one of my favorite planner, you know, times to plan. So there's that. Oh, and there's that other part of that spread. Okay. And then I was super inspired by I think this was like plans with, oh, who was this? I'll link her down below, but this was a planner that I saw on Instagram and she had done this really cute little mermaid spread with the pastel sticker book and I was very energized, but I didn't do my functional things over here. 
I didn't use these because I don't use these categories. <laughs> and I was still trying to convince myself that I was just going to use these categories that week and it was going to be fine. They're blank because I didn't need them. <laughs> so I didn't need those. So they're blank. And then this spread looking okay. I mean, I didn't fill in the last half of my week, but this is okay. This month I would describe that I was in and out of a planner rut. So I wasn't like, I was kind of inspired, but my planner layouts weren't really working for me, but I was able to get back on the horse with that little bit of inspiration. So this wasn't a full scale meltdown yet, but we can kind of see I'm slacking here. I'm not doing my currently page. Did I do a July currently page? Was there a July currently page to do? I don't see it in here. I bet it's in another planner somewhere. Anyway, this is not done. <laughs> so that's a red flag to me. And then my monthly is like kind of done. I know that more stuff than what's on this page happened in August. And I just didn't update it. I just planned probably on camera or something. And then I just left it. Like, I, I mean, you've got a blank thing here and I didn't update it as the month went along. So that is not great. But again, all of these are like real moments. Like that's not what I'm saying when I say that that's not great, but I know that I could have used my planner as a tool in a, a more functional way, really. So it's totally fine to have moments in your planner where you're, where they're blank. But like the purpose of this video is for me to talk through my own planner funks and like help you to identify where that might be happening and like maybe stop it even before it starts so that you can continue to use your planner in a real way. But I also, in this video, I want to put out there that like rest is absolutely fine. If you have things going on in your life and your planner doesn't fit with that, grab a notebook, grab a pen, and just start making to-do lists and put your decorative planner aside for a little bit. So don't like push yourself into this hustle culture either. Just make sure that you are being on top of your life, which we'll talk about in a little bit, because that can add to that crisis mode. So like if you're in crisis mode and you are in a full on planner funk and you're just not looking at your planner and you've got too much going on in your life, it can be even worse if you don't, if you're not organized, if you don't know what's going on on each day. So there's that. That's my little spiel. Okay. Another spread. I filled this in. I thought it was cute, but I didn't fill in all of the days. So <laughs> there's that. And then my cute daydreamer spread. This one, I kind of got back on the horse a little bit, but there's a lot of blank spots in here. Okay, and then this spread, I feel like I was re-energized. Like it's very filled out, all of that good stuff. And then, I mean, we had just a lot going on this week, but I didn't fill in any of my meals because I don't actually need to use that space like that. <laughs> so, which I have learned now. And then this last week here, completely blank. So you're starting to see that I'm really slipping again. So that's a blank week. And then September monthly, still blank, completely blank. But then I picked it back up and got into it again on this week. And this is like very, this is when I really started to like explore how I can use the dashboard functionally. So I tried over here to use this as like a memory keeping space. I tried making this a to-do list and making this like a decorative space. And then I added in my preview. Have I been doing? Oh yeah, I've already been doing that. So my like next week preview and then just starting to add some of my like social media stuff in here as well. So just kind of changing it up. And then this spread again is kind of blank, kind of written in. And then by that last week in September, and if you have been following my channel, you know, that the last week in September, maybe even into October, I didn't fill in my planner and then November is just blank. So that is kind of the process of what this looked like. And part of it was that this planner has a, is a colorful layout. I don't, I don't work well with the pages having a colorful layout. So let's talk about some tips to get out of a planner funk once you notice that you are in one. So let's kind of talk about what happens when you see things like this? Well, we knew that those pages go together anyway, so that that one doesn't really count. But when you see things that are not filled out in your planner or even those like blank weeks and months in your planner, what do you do next? Like what's the what's the next right thing as Anna and Elsa would say? So I would honestly say <laughs> open up your planner, open up your planner and maybe even like put in a daily sheet or put in just a piece of paper that's either lined or dot grid 
and just take it back to basics or open up your planner and just write in it pen to paper. I think the best way to get out of those planner funks and those planner ruts are to stay with it because as adults, it is it. Oh my gosh. Like thinking about stressful times. And this happens to me so much when I'm in a stressful moment, I tend to detach from my planner, except as of late, I've been much better about that. As of late, I've been really like leaning into my planner during stressful times. And I feel like the difference between when I would like pull away from creative planning and planning in general versus the last few months when, you know, my family was in a bit of crisis mode and I was using my planner to make lists and appointments and all of that stuff. I feel like the difference is 100% noticeable. I, I probably could even give you some metrics, but it's late at night, so I don't think you can do that. But open up your planner and get out a pen and start planning out your day. I think sometimes for some of us, number one, it can be like totally overwhelming. If you have a drawer full of stickers over there and you know that you have to decide what sticker book or sticker books you want to use, take a picture of that spread for Instagram before you write in it, write in your spread, sync it to your digital calendar if you're doing that. Like there are all these steps when all you really want to do is just write in your planner. So the first thing to getting back out of that planner funk or that planner rut is to open your planner and to lean into just being organized. So taking it back to basics, making sure you're at the places you need to be, making sure that you're not just relying on memory because none of us can honestly rely just on our memory. Like maybe even lean into using some of your digital tools, but open up something, find a planning system that's gonna patch you through until you either find inspiration again or find the layout that is the most functional for you at that point in your life. And then the next tip that I have is change your layout. <laughs> I mean, as you can see, I've gone through a bit of an evolution. If you look back on my channel, I wanted to be a vertical planner for so, so long. I really did. I wanted to be a vertical planner for many years. And for a while, I thought I was making it work until I realized that every other week or so, I was going back and filling in my check because I used to have my last box on the bottom were all checklists. And at the end of the week, I was going back and just filling those in. I wasn't actually using them during the week. And I was like, wait a minute, <laughs> is this actually working? And I was filling up my spreads with stickers and trying to balance out where my, my stickers were going and not necessarily where my plans were going. So at that time, I feel like my spreads were really focused on like what was pretty, what was gonna make the best Instagram picture, what was I gonna be able to do the most? So for me, changing into the dashboard layout has been like a 180 in my functional planning. So let's close up this, this sad planner and let's take a look at where I'm at today in my planner. So you can see that, that I am updating things. So we're mid month still, but like I have all of my stuff in here. My spreads are for the most part planned. This one, I don't know what happened on this week. That one was weird, but this one has like to-do list items and like all of my days are filled in and all of that good stuff. They at least all have pen on them. And then this week, like I'm really using my planners super functionally. We can even grab out my January spreads. So I have, I even have some daily sheets in here. I have menu plans that are filled in. I have like a really well-loved January monthly spread. I mean, you guys have seen these in my flip throughs, but like I have check marks on my checklists. Like I have just been so functional in this planner. And I think that the neutral layout has really helped me and moving into a neutral dashboard. So change up your layout, change up your cover even. Sometimes like, I also did not like this cover at all. <laughs> so I was constantly changing the cover and discs and I franken plan anyway. So that's kind of my jam, but I didn't like this, di this cover. And so I think I don't, I maybe like this gave me a bad precedent right off the bat because I did not like this cover. So change up the cover, change up your discs. Many of us don't like the plastic discs. So get yourself some beautiful metal discs. Try those out. Change up your layout. Like if you have been a vertical planner and you're like, well, I'm in a major planner funk and this just isn't working, try a dashboard. That 
that is always my suggestion. If you're a vertical planner and you're finding that it's not working, try a dashboard layout. 100% try it. And my other tip is to try it in neutral because it really allows, at least for me, this is again, speaking from my perspective, it really allows for that creativity when the layout and the paper that you're planning on is just neutral. It allows you to choose whatever stickers you want. You, for, if, if you're a matchy person like me, I need to have my stickers matching the pages, but I don't feel like I need to do that because my, you know, my paper is neutral. So I can just pull out whatever I'm inspired by. Think about what you want your dividers to look like first. Like, or do you want your dividers to be cute and bright and that kind of thing? Or do you want them to really be kind of neutral? Do you want the inside guts of the planner that you're writing on to be neutral, nothing else there? Or do you want some bright pops of color in there that maybe like help to bring out some of that inspiration? So really like digging in and thinking about all of those things and then changing it up can add a really fresh perspective. I heard Cindy from Llama Letters, she said, sometimes all you have to do is burn it to the ground. Like that is what you need to do. Burn the entire thing to the ground and come back fresh and you'll be like re-inspired. So try that out. <laughs> that may help. And then another thing that can help you is to set a routine in your planner and like giving yourself dedicated time to working in your planner. I've said this in probably like 20 different videos, but setting a routine and making yourself sit down with your planner every day is the only way to really get back into that system because we can all have pretty planners on our desks, but unless we actually sit down and dedicate the time to write in them, we are not going to achieve anything with our paper planners. Of course, you're going to achieve things in your life, but you're going to do it in a different way. You might do it with digital tools, but paper planning takes time and you have to dedicate that time. So sometimes if you're in a planner funk or in a planner rut or outside of your routine, giving yourself 10 minutes in the morning when you're having your cup of coffee and sitting down with your planner, that's all it takes. Looking in your journal and writing it again. I can guarantee that once you open up your planner, if you are someone who loves paper and pens like the community here, um, it is going to, it's all going to come back to you. I have the Celine Dion song stuck in my head. <laughs> Feel free to sing the lyrics in the comments. I'm not going to sing them here because I do not need a copyright strike. So yeah, the, uh, it's all coming back to me. Yes. You guys know, you guys know, millennials know, you guys know it. Okay. So then the last tip that I have for you is ask yourself, and this actually came from C Cindy from Llama Letters as well. She did like a plan as I go where she did a short little snippet talking about being in a planner funk that actually really helped me when I was in my planner funk. I was watching, you know, tips and tricks to how to get out of it because I kept seeing so many comments from people that were like, I miss you. I want to see you again. I want you to be on social media. And I wanted it too. And so I came across her video and she said, and I actually have notes over here, but she said, the questions that you should be asking yourself when you're in a planner funk are, what do I need from my system? So kind of remind yourself of what your purpose is with planning. So what do you want out of your planner? Do you want it to be a mostly decorative space where you just throw stickers on a page? That's totally fine, do that. Do you want it to be a functional thing with checklists and boxes and all your appointments are in it or, and that kind of thing? Do that. Do you want it to be a space that you create in more of like a Bujo style? do that, but really think about and evaluate what you want out of your planner. Also, do you want your planner in one book? Do you want to use multiple planners? How is your brain operating best? So really like reevaluating that system, I think is going to be very helpful. Those are my tips and tricks. And that's my talk today about being in a planner funk. So thank you. Thank you for coming to my planner TED talk. <laughs> thank you so much for being here. If you're new, hello, my name is Caitlin and I so appreciate that you are here. If you have been in a planner funk or if you are even currently in one, so here, if you've been in a planner funk, let us know how you crawled your way out of that and came back to the planner community and or back to your planner in general. And then if you are currently in a planner funk, feel free to share that in this space. And then others, I would love it if we could like rally around people who are in a planner funk, who we see in the comments and maybe like support them and tell them, you know, of course you guys know from me, if you're in a planner funk, you are valued here. And I hope that you're able to find your way back to some inspiration because 
the more voices in the planner community and the more creativity that we get to see, the better. So you are valued and you are a worthy member of the planner community, no matter how often you post, no matter if you post at all, no matter if you are commenting or if you were just like silently watching and looking at people's Instagrams, like you are valued here and you are important. And I, for one, am very, very happy that you're here. So keep doing what you're doing and you are a rock star. You got this, you'll get there. So thanks again for being here. If you are one of my new followers, thank you so much for all of your love and support. There are so many new people here. So, so many. So thank you again for being here. My name is Caitlin and I would love it if you would hit that red subscribe button down below. Give this video a big thumbs up and leave a comment down below with, oh my gosh, we're running out of emojis. <laughs> oh, I've got it. Okay. Let's do the thumbs up. <laughs> let's leave the thumbs up in the comments and all of those good things. So thank you in advance for doing that. And if you'd like to find me anywhere else, you can find me over on at creating in chaos underscore official. You guys, we are 500 friends away from 10 K, which is blowing my mind. Like if you think about the number of people that 10,000 people are like, I cannot believe that many people want to check me out <laughs> over on Instagram. So thank you so much for all of that. And, um, that that's just incredible. But if you aren't already, I do share things over there that I don't share here. So make sure that you check me out over there and give me a follow. And then, um, also check out my Patreon, which is linked down below as well as the spice chaos podcast. We are back. We posted an episode yesterday. So thanks for checking that out. And then you can always check out any of my affiliate links or other goodies down below. And thank you in advance for being here. By the way, have fun today.